All right, today after church, meeting for adult Sunday school members following the service, grab some snacks and head for the children's room. To the children's room with you. All of you. Okay. Thank you to everyone who voted, and please take the time to pray for our leaders. Amen. Excuse me, sorry, cough drop. Praise by Teresa and prayer on Wednesday at 5. Anything else? Wow. Check out Life Church Facebook page if you would like to, re to revisit or share with someone else our Sunday morning worship or sermon. Please visit our Life Church of Jacksonville Facebook page, courtesy. You guys are doing a great job. Where'd they go? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yay. Thanks, guys. See you going. Oh, good. No. Oh, well, that's for a minute. Okay, can I sit down now? Yeah, go ahead. Don't you want to sing a song? Mm-mm. You don't want me to sing a song. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, see now, if although although God's grace is present, um, although God's grace is present whenever uh, whenever we have to uh, move things around so that we cover for folks who aren't here, I hope you'll next week let Teresa know how much you appreciate her doing the music because there's there's just something special about it being you know live and in person that makes it a far better experience, I think. So. There you are. So tell me about your week real quick. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a good week for you? No. Yeah. Well, we're looking for a better week ahead, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> How about anyone else? You got got some good plans for the week ahead? Believe in God for good plans for the week ahead? Yes. No, much yes. better. That is awesome, and you got a good job. Thank God for that. Last week, oh, that's thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank please. you for the so prayers for my grandmother and for my uncle. They're doing a lot better. So they're recovering. They're not 100% yet, but they're both moving along. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, and Elvin, you were telling me about your elbow? Oh, thank you for the prayers. I'm Amen. doing much better now. <clears throat> Elvin back to work. Had some had to visit the emergency room half the time. Uh, at least three, four times. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. And uh, you know what that does to your day. So thank God that you're, uh, you're in recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else you got something to share real quick this week that's taking place? I'm trying to be a, a, make it a better congregation. You're, you're, you're taking over Belka's seat. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. a place, but it's... No, nobody can take each other's place. But you can take your seat. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, how many of you got your Bibles this morning? Yeah. All right. We're going to go through a good number of verses here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you some secrets and some things, uh, as the Lord shared with me, but uh, things that, that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, how many of you have been around for a while long enough to remember a show called uh, Dallas? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody yeah. remember Dallas? Oh, J.R. Yeah. 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 J.R. Ewing and... And, uh, the whole, the whole uh, who shot Jr. One year it was the biggest question of the year. Who shot Jr. Anyone remember that? Yeah. It was a drink. Huh? It ended Whoa. up being a drink. Did it? Yeah. Did it? I, 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 I thought that was the part. That ended up being a drink. <laughs> I, I didn't remember that part. But anyway, the biggest question of the year was who shot Jr. Now, does anyone remember what made Dallas interesting? Is that it was a, a prime time soap opera. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, it's like the, the first evening time soap opera. For those who work during the day, they could actually get in on a on a soap yeah. opera drama at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that anybody really wanted to. Although things have changed so radically, now we watch other people's lives from afar. It's kind of interesting on television. Anyhow, the next show that came after that was called, uh, let's see, Dynasty. Yep. Anybody remember Dynasty? Yep. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest name in Dynasty was Anyone remember? Yeah, he was, he was, he was there, but, but Gary Ewing. Gary Ewing. Uh, uh, no, uh, yeah. Joan Collins. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Joan Collins. Yeah, who would know Joan Collins if it wasn't for Dynasty? And she spent a number of years in the in the spotlight as one of the most glamorous actresses around because of that position in Dynasty. You say, well, why does that? What what does that have to do with us this morning? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look over. Uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about dynasties. But before we do that, we're going to talk about, first of all, the kingdom of God. 
We're going to talk about the kingdom of God. You might be familiar with a little bit of a, a, a newer dynasty of one who makes duck calls. Yeah. yeah. That would be the duck dynasty. Yes. Yeah. Right? Anybody familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's look at what dynasty means first of all. According to uh, to my web work here of what the dynasty means, it's a family of rulers who rule over a country for a long period of time. That's a dynasty. And uh, like the Duck Dynasty, I guess, it's because it's a family who rules over the business, you know, so it's a Duck Dynasty. Maybe they rule over ducks. No, it's, it's the business, isn't it? But the dynasty is a family who rules over a country for a long period of time. Now, where does that, what, what do you think that means for you and I? Well, we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. And as we talk about the kingdom of God, I know you don't necessarily think the kingdom of God is a dynasty, but it is. The kingdom of God is a dynasty. It's a family that rules together. The kingdom of God is a dynasty, isn't it? And uh, the way that, you, uh, that the kingdom is presented to us is, is uh, throughout the scriptures, is as this family rule that God's made us a part of through adoption, hasn't he? Because we're adopted into the family of God, we've become a part of the dynasty. And so when we talk about the kingdom, I want you to start thinking about that as, first of all, who's the king? Our father, right? Yes. It's a family dynasty. Yes. And so when we start thinking of the kingdom as something abstract and external, we start thinking of it, how did I get into this dynasty? What is the kingdom, of, first of all? It's this dynasty this dynasty that we're a part of is how the kingdom of God has entered into us. Remember, the kingdom of God is within us. And uh, when we talk about the kingdom within, we're talking about a new birth experience. That's how the kingdom was implanted or imparted into us because thereby we became a part of a dynasty. Our father is the king. Amen. Yeah. Right? And we rule because of our entrance into the family. It's not like the kingdom of God is, is a thing that you place on the inside as much as you from the inside been made a child of God who has made you a member of the dynasty. Do you understand that? Because for a lot, a lot of times you can think, well, the kingdom of God is something abstract, something, and I'm, I'm not really making the connection about what the kingdom of God is if I don't understand it as a dynasty. And how do I get into this kingdom? Through new birth. That's how I get into the kingdom. That's how the kingdom gets into me. Amen? Amen. Now, if I had to ask uh, what the kingdom is, um, even the scriptures say the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you say, that's nice. <laughs> you know, what is that? Right? I'm sure that's your question on the inside of you. If I say, the kingdom of God is within you, and then I say, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You get that warm, fuzzy feeling that your mind is completely blank about, what is that? <laughs> First of all, let me back up a little bit and take us over to, uh, let's see, how many know where the Lord's Prayer is? Let me, I didn't put it down on me. There's several different uh, places we could go to to find the Lord's Prayer. Let's just, somebody name off one of them. So uh, Matthew, we'll go to Matthew. That's the first thing I heard, Matthew. Which chapter? And, uh, let's see. Let's look at the sixth chapter and the fifth verse. Oops, that's not it. A little further down in the uh, ninth verse. Fifth verse is when he got... Uh, he starts off teaching, but he actually starts the prayer in the ninth verse. How many of you are familiar with the Lord's Prayer? Of course. You know, most of us can recite it, is that right? Been around a while, we can recite that. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna keep your, your fingers there and open to it while I go through some principles that Jesus talks about here. Alright, so what is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? Right? I just told you with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay, that doesn't make much sense to us. So let's try and figure that out. First of all, let me back up and say what the kingdom is. 
The kingdom is the manifestation of the will of God. All right? The kingdom is the manifestation of the will of God. Now that manifests, when I, when I said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, is righteousness, is righteousness between us and God, God's will for our life? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Of course it is. So that's, that's part of the kingdom of God. He's manifesting his will concerning righteousness. Peace. Is it God's will that we have peace with God through, through our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes. Of course it is. So we see that the kingdom is the manifestation of his will, or we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. What about joy? Yes. You think, you think that's part of, yes. of the manifestation of God's will in our life? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you can see all these things, as well as everything that is at the king's disposal, what he wants in our lives, wants to manifest in our lives, Amen. is the kingdom. Amen. So when you're asked to yourself, what is, what is the definition of the kingdom? The manifestation of God's will. Yes. How do I know that? Well, let's look first at, at what Jesus taught us here. Now, he's talking about prayer, and I, I said, what, the ninth verse in the sixth chapter? We can go up a little bit real quick. It says, uh, when you pray, you do not use vain repetitions as he can do. They think because of their much words, they'll be heard. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. In verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray. And he says, yes. that's a cool thing. Yes, it is. I might ask about that later on. <laughs> All right, so... He starts off this, this teaching in prayer. It's a response to the disciples having said, you know, teach us to pray, right? Yes. So he says, um, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. All right, let's stop right there. So in verse 9, he starts out and he says, How do we teach us to pray? Hey. He says, teach us to pray. And he says, uh, start off prayer like this. Father in heaven. Okay, stop right there. Remember we told you what, what the kingdom was? Is, is that a friend of yours? I'll invite her in if she is. <laughs> so, he starts off saying, Our Father which art in heaven. Which, if you didn't catch this, Jesus, see, we look back on things and they seem so simple to us. We look back and we say, Okay, it's so simple to understand God's my Father. Can you really put yourself back on the time that Jesus was sharing? So anyway, he's talking. He's talking to the for the first time, revealing God is not just this uh, external person, but as a father. Amen. So he starts to communicate and share with people that prayer is a personal experience. It's not just a ritual. Remember, he said in the verses above, don't use vain repetition. Don't. Don't go through prayer ritualistically. That prayer is an intimate experience. You say, well, are you teaching on prayer this morning? Well, kind of, kind of. Because in order for the kingdom, God's will, to be done in our lives, Jesus directly ties that to prayer. But work with me as we bring it all together. So he first starts to connect with intimacy. That this kingdom that is going to come through our lives is one that's a result of intimacy. It's from our Father because we're a dynasty, but through this intimacy that we have through Him, we're going to experience the kingdom of God manifest. Let's see what He says next. He says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right? So Jesus introduces God as their Father because of the dynasty, right? But look at what the dynasty does. He says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he immediately starts talking about the kingdom, doesn't he? He puts two things together. Prayer, prayer, is, prayer is these two things put together. I know it's sometimes hard to explain, so I'm going to do it like this. I've done it before. It's pretty simple. But how many of you ever baked a cake? Anyone? Bake a cake. Uh, yeah. what's, in, what's in a cake for the most part? Flour. Flour, butter, sugar, eggs, cake mix, cake mix. 
Good. Okay. Even with your cake mix, you, need, you usually need a little egg and, uh, and some oil and some water or something. Okay, so, so when, you get, when you go to the store and you buy a cake, or, or you've made a cake, right? We call it a cake, but it's really lots of different ingredients yes. in one, isn't it? Yes. But we call it a cake. And, and, and what's interesting is that when we talk about prayer, sometimes we, 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 we just talk about it like it's a single thing. Not realizing that like a cake, it's several different things combined that make up prayer. All right? One of the most, uh, the, the large, there's, there's just like that cake, there's large portions of things and small portions of things. Okay? The larger portion of things, in fact, I think if you look at the ingredients on a box, they tell you that the things that are the largest portion are up in the front, and the things that are the smallest portion are at the very end. So when we talk about prayer, look at this like an ingredients, okay? The ingredients to this, to prayer, the cake, the ingredients to prayer, are more than one thing. And look at what Jesus starts to tell us. First of all, he gives us the first two greatest ingredients to prayer. Now you say, well, I thought we were talking about the kingdom, not prayer. They are synonymous in the sense that prayer is the means through which the kingdom can manifest. Amen. Let's look together. Because prayer is not just one thing. See, don't get hooked on just one thing. Right? Here, look, look at what the ingredients to prayer are. And he starts to talk to us here. Again, let's see what verse. First verse, our Father, which art in heaven. Okay? You can't pray effectively unless you have a personal and intimate relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. New birth is the only way you can communicate with God in prayer. The first prayer that you make is just simply, I believe. After that, every prayer that you make is a is a petition or a relationship with the Father. Okay? Even okay. Jesus recommended, don't pray anymore in my name to me. Pray in my name to the Father. That, that was his, his directive to us. So he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, holy. Yes. Every part of our prayer time, one of the greatest ingredients, like on the box, the, the first ingredient in prayer is, I'm sorry, cake is probably flour. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you look at me like cake? <laughs> so the first thing in that box is usually uh, flour. And likewise, the very first part in prayer is given to us right here. He says, our Father in heaven, our, the first thing is we need to be able to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and calling him our Father. It's an intimacy. The greatest ingredient that he has in prayer is worship. Hallowed be your name. Yes. Hallowed be your name. In other words, there's got to be a time when you first recognize yes. God, is, God is my Father here. This is a relationship of intimacy. I'm not coming into this thing just trying to get what I want and get business done. That's not, that's not what prayer is. And then he says, hallowed be thy name. In other words, prayer is a time where we humble ourselves. Are you hearing me, saints? Prayer is a time where we humble ourselves. We've got a busy mind with lots of things on it. We've got uh, ideas going on on the inside about what we should be praying about and so forth. So forth. But can I tell you this? That Jesus didn't teach us to start praying whatever's on the top of your head. He said, first empty yourself. Come to a time where God's, where, where you recognize God for who He is. And as you recognize God for who He is, empty yourself. Yes. Listen first. I'll tell you what. Worship is more of a listening experience than anything else. It's not just a constant time of, of speaking and gyrating and and putting out there our efforts. That's not what worship is. Worship is a submission, an yes. act of submission. Yes. Amen. Hear that choir? Amen. It's a good word. Amen. It's, a, it's an act of submission. Yes. Prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. It's where two people are communicating. One who is your father is communicating with the, we who are his children. Amen? Amen. And that's so important because we, we, we've denigrated prayer to a personal effort to get from God what I want. 
But that's never what Jesus taught us prayer Amen. was. Amen. It's a time to empty ourselves, to do yes. some listening. Because all the things that come thereafter are a result of seeing God's perspective about the situations that we're in planted in. Because let me give you some examples. You know, you got somebody, you got a boss or somebody that maybe you're having a difficult time with. You know, you want to go to God and you want to say, God, change my boss because my boss is not the kind of person I'm working well with. So change him or her. Right? But God says, come into my presence. Recognize that we're here as a family. You have a family dynasty and that your purpose here is not just to alleviate the suffering or symptoms or what have you of the things that are surrounding your life but to let the kingdom come through you. That's, that's, that's what you're here for. Amen. Yeah. Right? Now, in the situation that you're here with your boss, how can the kingdom begin to be presented through us? So as we worship, we humble ourselves, we put aside our preconceived ideas about how we need to approach the issue. Amen. And we listen to what God the Father is directing us by His Spirit. And as we listen to what He's saying and how He begins to massage our hardness of yes. heart and how He begins to change our attitude towards people and towards those persons, we first came into prayer with a bad attitude saying, God, just deliver me from this individual. Help me with this situation. Change that situation. Let God massage that stoniness of our hearts so that we become that pliable person that can truly allow the kingdom to come into our lives and through right. our lives. Yes. We can't do that while we're doing our thing. We're part of a dynasty. We're, as a part of a dynasty, we're taking directions from God, who is our Father, so that He can let His will be done. That's what the kingdom is. Amen. It's that His will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. You don't think in heaven His will is like halfway done. You don't think in, in heaven... He's having a hard time getting his will done. Right? It's not that way. Amen. That's why Jesus said, as it is in heaven. In heaven, no, there's no obstructionism. Amen. In heaven, there's no people standing there, Amen. you know, forcibly resisting the will of God. No resistance, no friction. But on the earth, there's resistance. Yes. On our part sometimes. Definitely on the part of those who don't yet know him as Father. Yes. But the only way they will is because of this kingdom come and will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. All right. So our first attitude to letting the kingdom of God come in and through our lives is in prayer. And part of prayer is the recognition of my Father and the hum hum humility on my part to listen more than speak. Amen. To listen more than speak. Now, true, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. In other words, yes, you do have to take some initiative to start a conversation. How many of you realize that if you're a, if you're a salesperson, okay, if you're a salesperson, you have to go out there and you have to initiate a conversation. Yes. People don't just come up to you and they don't know who you are or what you're about and they just say, Hey, do you sell this product? And you're like, yeah, I sell this product. Well, I really, really want it. Can you please give me that product? Yes. No, that's not the way it works. <clears throat> you start a conversation. Yes. And in starting that conversation, things open up, don't they? Amen. Opportunities open up. Yes. Well, when it says draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you, that means start that conversation with God. Yes, it takes some faith on our part to start a conversation with God. But he's always available. His schedule's never booked. He's never too full and he's ready. So we start that conversation and we just say, God, I just empty myself because I have a lot of things on my mind and heart today. But I first empty myself because you know what they are. And I know you want to meet those needs before I can even speak, which is what Jesus said. Jesus said, your heavenly Father knows what you need before you even say it. Amen. Well, if you're dealing with somebody who knows what you need before you even say it, then you're dealing with somebody who just wants to tell you what they can do for about that situation before we rattle off all the things that we want them to do about it Amen. Yes. and how we want them to change the situation. Yes. Amen? Amen. So we come into God's presence recognizing that as a dynasty, He's our Father. We're dealing with a king of the kingdom, but He's our Father. 
and then we worship. We empty ourselves so that we can listen and hear what God wants us to say. Because the prayer part of prayer, the speaking part of prayer, is a result of having been communicating with God the Father by the Holy Spirit, and then speaking how the Father wants to change the situation in our lives. Amen. To change the world in which we live. We can all be so much more powerful by simply just hearing and speaking. Then we spend the mass quantities of time in prayer as we will. To communicate with God on the level that we speak from instead of the position where He speaks from. Amen? Amen? When we speak in prayer, we speak from the position we're at, under the circumstances, involved in the situations, very subjective. But when we speak from the position that the Holy Spirit gives to us as we worship, we humble ourselves and we hear what the Spirit is saying to us as church. And we begin to communicate, just, just simply respond. God, I know I don't like, you know I don't like my boss, but God, beyond what I like for him, what do you want for him? What do you want for my boss? And suddenly, you begin to hear what the Spirit is saying, how he wants you to intercede and pray, how you can begin to let the kingdom come and will be done. You can manifest the kingdom of God. You can let the kingdom come. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just by listening. It takes us humbling ourselves. It's the biggest part of prayer is to listen. And then let that kick start. Let me uh, take you to two verses together. Um, John 14 and 4. Just flip over a few pages there. Because really what we're talking about this morning is how to uh, see the kingdom in our lives. Because we said, what is the kingdom of God? It is the manifest will of God. The kingdom is the manifest will of God. In other words, let's say that, uh, that you need a car, right? Instead of praying, God, give me a car, give me a car, give me a car, give me a car. You're going to go into the, the presence of God and you're going to say, God, you know I have needs and you know what the need is before I even had it. So this isn't newsflash for you. Yes. But God, I'm believing that you are right now in the process of supplying that need. I'm thanking you in faith for a car I've yet to see. Right? And then you're listening to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Because somewhere, just like the tax in the mouth of a fish that you need to go fish for, like Peter, somewhere that car exists. And somewhere through some circumstances, God's on its, bringing it on its way to your need. But you have to be listening. You have to be listening to see what the Holy